Jesus is the ultimate example for us to follow. Fully God, fully man, the perfect example. But we can run into lots of trouble if we don't understand the context around Jesus' stories. Not understanding the context of his words and stories can lead us into thinking the point of the message is exactly the opposite of what Jesus was trying to teach. Hey, Brad Large here with Reclaim Reformation, where we're striving to live biblically and reform our vocations, families, and churches. Today, I'm going to talk about several stories that people misinterpret, oversimplify, or misquote. Ultimately, we need to be like the sinners that ate with Jesus. We need to walk away changed. We need to let the truth of the text lead us to a faithful interpretation. So here we go. We'll talk about keeping Jesus' words in context, letting Jesus interpret the stories for us, and one of my personal favorite stories, the time Jesus used a racial slur. The first story is the one that gets the most misused. It's applied incorrectly all the time. And it's often thrown in Christians' faces like it's some kind of thing that we have to overcome, like a stumbling block. And it's from the Sermon on the Mount. Sermon on the Mount is the only recorded sermon that Jesus gave in its entirety. So Jesus sits down in front of people who are surrounding him on a hillside to hear his teaching. Jesus preaches, and then in chapter 7 of Matthew, he talks about judging other people. The Gospels tell the story of Jesus as written by the people who were there, and so they set up the words and actions of Jesus for us in specific ways. Much too often, people isolate the stories or sayings of Jesus from their context. Then, when we talk to non-believers or even some ignorant or confused believers, we end up having to put the quote back into context or giving more details of the story that uh, they originally left out. So here's the passage. In Matthew 7, verses 1 and 2, Judge not that you be not judged, for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. If you've ever gotten into an argument with a non-believer, they usually go straight for this gem, where they say, I'm pretty sure Jesus said not to judge. Or judge not, lest you be judged. And nothing could be further from the truth. Actually, he says not to judge hypocritically. In fact, Jesus is the judge. One day he will judge the living and the dead. Jesus is saying, don't judge by your standard, judge by God's. And don't judge someone with a standard that you wouldn't want to be judged by. There are many other examples and stories in the Bible where God calls the faithful to judge evil and wicked and do something about it. One example is Phineas standing up against sexual immorality and idolatry in Numbers 25 verses 7 through 13, or the multiple times Paul tells Timothy and others to excommunicate people who are practicing wickedness in the church. This is very important as we read other stories about Jesus because it's easy to say Jesus didn't judge anyone, but he was in fact judging them. He knew that they had all fallen short in sin, and Jesus alone is uniquely qualified to judge anyone he wants. So understanding the Bible in context is so important so that we can you know, then present a fuller picture of the story of Jesus or explain the teaching of Jesus in an honest way. And notice I said an honest way, because here's the deal. I'm going to be saying some views or interpretations are out of context or incorrect, etc. So I want to point something out real quick. Interpretations of the biblical text and especially of the Gospels fall into certain categories. There's the category of faithful interpretation, which is an interpretation that's in line with biblical teaching. There are many teachings that are faithful teachings, but not true teachings or right teachings. These are the areas where all the Christian denominations and theological disagreements come from, and most of them are okay. There's a true interpretation. The text says this one thing, and there's really no argument against it. It's simply true. And these are issues like creation or the Trinity or the identity of Christ. Uh, If you don't believe one of these things, you can't really call yourself a Christian. And then there's a wrong interpretation. This is when an interpretation can be proven completely wrong by the text. You might not agree with everything I say, and that's cool, but what I'm trying to do is go for a faithful interpretation here. So the next story, Jesus feeds the 5,000. So this story is in Matthew 14. Jesus is teaching 5,000 men. There's additional women and children. Uh, There's no food. Everyone's hungry. So Jesus takes a meager amount of loaves of bread and fish and turns it into a bounty enough for all the people there. And I know I was taught as a child that the miracle was a big part of the story, or maybe that's just what I personally took away from it. But that's not really what's happening. If we put this story into context, the paragraph before this gives us a setup. Verses 1 through 12 of chapter 14 in Matthew are about how John the Baptist dies. 
King Herod gives a feast, and through all the drunken debauchery, he's asked to kill John the Baptist, and so he does. He delivers his head on a silver platter to his wife's daughter because John the Baptist had insulted King Herod's wife. And so that's the type of feast that the world thinks is glorious. But Jesus comes through and gives an alternative type of feast, one where people simply desire to be taught about how to have true life and are nourished by something, uh, something that's actually satisfying, which is Jesus, the bread of life, the Lamb of God. We can simply take a story like this out of context, and when we do, the takeaway is that Jesus miraculously provides materially for people, which Jesus actually explicitly speaks against the next time he sees this crowd. That part of the story can be found in John 6, starting at verse 22. And Jesus openly rebukes the people who are following him for free bread. In fact, he says something so crazy that many of his followers leave. They just stop following him. And the last story is the story of the Canaanite woman. This is one of my favorite Jesus stories because it confronts us with the idea that Jesus was not always nice. That his kindness really doesn't fit into our neat little boxes of what we feel that love is. And it's found in Matthew 15. It goes like this. A woman's following behind the disciples uh, and Jesus, and she asked Jesus to heal her daughter. And instead of having compassion, the disciples are hard-hearted. And Jesus kind of joins in. He tells the woman that he's come to save the lost sheep of Israel. And guess what? She isn't a lost sheep of Israel. Jesus is basically saying, look, lady, I'm not here to save you and your daughter. She then responds and pleads with Jesus. And that's when he says this in Matthew 15, 26. It's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. He calls the woman a dog, which was a racial slur used against Syrophoenicians and Canaanite people. It was kind of a bad name. And people scramble to excuse Jesus for this by saying things like, well, he uses a gentler term for dog, like a pet, not the harsher word. Or he wasn't really using a racial slur. But here's the deal. Anyone reading this without our modern sensibilities sees clearly that this language is harsh. In fact, it's a central part of the story. I mean, if I said poop instead of, well, you know, you'd still get the picture, right? You can't explain that away no matter how you slice it. But instead of asking why Jesus says this, we try to explain it away. It's like a knee-jerk reaction. Actually, that's a good question. Put in the comments, why do you think we do that? Why do we try to explain Jesus' harsh actions away when we confront them in the gospel? I mean, this is my favorite example of having to take everything the Bible gives us. We can't pick and choose. Either it's all God's inspired, inerrant, infallible word, or it's not. Either Jesus was the perfect example, or he wasn't. That's a true or false statement. Jesus then praises the Canaanite woman for her response and her faith and completely embarrasses the disciples. So he does bring it full circle. Even though he used harsh language with the woman, it was the disciples that got their noses rubbed in the fact that they weren't really that special and their faith game needed a lot of help. In fact, this story is especially for anyone who thinks that they have the true interpretation of the Bible down or someone who's super convinced of their own doctrine. This story reminds us that good is defined by God that no one is good enough, that we need to be open to what Jesus is trying to teach us in the moment. So I hope this gives you a takeaway that when you approach the Bible with openness, respect, and humility, you can walk away changed. And if you want to be more familiar with the stories of the Bible, check out this video next where I talk about the fastest way to build a more solid foundation of the biblical stories. Or if you're itching to study more of the Bible, then jump back to the beginning with this video on Genesis, the beginning of everything. And spoiler, Jesus is in that story too.